we are going to explore four types of problems that all come under the heading of area under the curve. The normal distribution, that is our curve right here. And this is the area that is under it. Remember, according to the empirical rule, 68% of the population is within plus and minus one standard deviation of the mean. And 95% of the population is within plus two and minus two of the mean. So you have empirical rule, 68% within plus or minus one standard deviation, and 95% within plus or minus two standard deviations. And of course, we have 50% below the mean and 50% above the mean. In terms of proportions, we would say that's 0.500 or just 0.5 above the mean and 0.500 below the mean. If we add up all the area under the curve, that's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, it's one. So it's like if you're talking about apple pies. If you get zero apple pie, no apple pie. If you get one apple pie, you get to eat the whole thing. And if you get half of an apple pie, that's 0 0.500 of an apple pie. So we have proportions that range from zero to one, and then percentages that range from zero to 100. Of course, if you want to turn a proportion to a percentage, then you multiply by 100, right? So 0 0.500 times 100 gets you 50.0. And 50% plus 50% is 100%. So that's how we have our proportions, 0 to 1, and our percentages, 0 to 100. To go between them, we take our proportion, multiply it by 100, and we get our percentage. By the way, you don't actually have to multiply it by 100 with the calculator. You can just move that decimal point over two spots, and it's the same thing. So let's go ahead and get started with a percentile problem. And we're actually going to do two percentile problems to introduce us to solving for the area under the curve. Here's Jill, and she's a photographer. Let's say that on a photo shoot, on average, she takes 300 pictures with a standard deviation of 100 photos. According to the empirical rule, if her taking photos is described by a normal distribution, according to the empirical rule, 68% of the time on a photo shoot, she'll take somewhere between 200 and 400 photos, typically 300. 95% of the time, she's going to take somewhere between 100 and 500 photos. So she'll have some days, lots and lots of photos are taken on that particular day, close to 500. Some days, hardly any photos need to be taken, only 100. Typically around 300 photos for a photo shoot. 68% of the time between 200 and 400. 95% of the time between 100 and 500. All right, let's get back to the topic of percentile. So let's say there's a day where she shoots 200 photos. Percentile ranking is a percentage of scores a value is above. So if she took 200 photos on a particular day and we want to know the percentile ranking for that, we really want to know what percentage of days did she take more photos than normal. For 200, the percentile ranking would be 16th. That means on a day when she takes 200 photos, that's more photos than 16% of other days when she takes photos. So that 84% of the time she'd be taking 200 or more photos and 16% of the time she'd be taking less than 200. But important, percentile ranking, percentage of scores the value is above. So 200 is above 16% of the scores. It's called the 16th percentile ranking. The percentile ranking for a day where she takes 100 photos would be the 2.5th percentile ranking. That is, it, that day there would be more photos taken than 2.5% percent of when she takes photos. Don't worry about how I'm getting these numbers right now. Just get a sense of what is percentile ranking. A day when she takes 300 photos, that's the midpoint, right? That's the mean. The percentile ranking for that would be 50th. Because again, percentile ranking, percentage of scores, the value is above. She is above 0.500 of the distribution. That is why it's a 50th percentile ranking. I think you can see where this is going, right? We're going to get up to an even higher percentile ranking and then an even higher percentile ranking. So as we get to larger and larger scores, our percentile ranking will increase as we move to the right. On a day that she takes 400 photos, percentile ranking for that type of a photo day with 400 photos would be 84.1 percentile ranking, meaning if she takes 400 photos, she knows, wow, I've taken more photos a day than I typically do. Generally, this is above like 84.1% of the days when I take photos. So it's a lot of photos there, right? Now keep in mind how we get this 84.1 percentile. We know that half of the days are below the mean. So that's our proportion of 0.500. Now 
and then our mean is 300, and then we'll talk about a z-score shortly. And this value here, this is our, our we'll, we'll have a z-score, and this is going to be the area between our mean and z. So bear with me, we'll get there. And this area between the mean and z is 0 0.341, and I'll show you how to do that. But the main thing is, is once you figure this out, you'd add 0 0.500, obvious, it's half the distribution here, plus this 0 0.341, that you would look up in a z-table, area between the mean and z, and you get eight, uh, 0.841, you'd multiply it by 100, and you get the 84.1th percentile. Again, I'll, I'll break this out for you, just so you can see where this is going. On a day when Jill takes 500 photos, that is a lot of photos for her. That would be a 97.7th percentile. That day would outshine, <laughs> in terms of taking photos, 97.7% of all the other days that she would generally be taking photos. It'd be a very high volume photo day. Notice how we got that 97.7th percentile. We know that, of course, half the distribution is below the mean. And then we're interested, what about the area between the mean and z, between the mean of 300 and taking all the way up to 500 photos. So we will look up that proportion and I'll cover that. Uh, uh, we find 0.477 in that area between the mean and z table. We had add up these two proportions and we would multiply by 100, the result of that, and that's how we get the 97.7th percentile ranking. So again, percentile ranking, percentage of scores the value is above, always. If it's a percentile ranking problem, you just know it's gonna be below whatever value is given. Okay, so let's say we're given the following percentile problem. For a normal distribution, which this is, with a mean of 300, and a standard deviation of 100. What is a percentile ranking for a value of 225? Right here, 225, between 200 and 300. This says percentile ranking, so we're interested in the area below the 225. All right, good. Now, let's go over what are the steps we're going to do to solve this type of problem right here. Step one, draw the picture. And I have here the brains behind how to solve these problems. If you draw the picture, it will make these problems so much easier, trust me. Step two, calculate the z-score. So z-score is equal to the value minus the mean, that quantity divided by the standard deviation. This is gonna be easy math, right? It's gonna have subtraction and division. We've got this. Step three, refer to the appropriate z-table. Now, for our class, we've got two options. We've got a z-table that's called the area between the mean and z. Here's the mean, here's the z, and it's the area between it. And then we have another z-table called the area beyond z. So wherever your z-score is, it's that area going off into the tail. And then step four, solve the problem. Add if needed. You may have to add two values if the uh, percentile ranking is over here. We'll go into that. And since it's going to be a percentile ranking, we're going to have to multiply our proportion that we get by 100. Again. I'll walk you through this. So step one, draw the picture. I can see that we have safely done this. We have drawn the picture, we have the mean, we have the standard deviation marked within the context of a normal distribution. We've got another value marked, that's a 225. So here's this normal distribution. You wanna draw it just like this. You wanna draw one vertical line for the mean, another vertical line for the value. Mark on there what the mean is, and then I recommend go ahead and indicate what would be the values for plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviations, minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations. So you've got B, C, and C, because I have a normal curve with two dividing lines, so we're always going to have three areas. So you've labeled it. Let's come back to what we're doing here, a percentile ranking problem. So 225 is here, and we show you the area below it. We're good. We've drawn the picture, and again, this is so important. Step two, calculate the z-score. Here is the math worked out. Our value is 225, the mean is 300, so 225 minus 300, divided by the standard deviation, which is 100. 225 minus 300 gets us 75, divided by 100, and that gets us negative 0.75. That is a z-score. A z-score is how many standard deviations are you away from the mean? Let's take a moment and just make sure we're comfortable about how this works. So a z-score of zero means you are at the mean. Think of it like each of the, these values from 100 to 500, think of them as like little houses. 
and the z-score is their address. So if your address in terms of z-scores is zero, you're right on the mean. For the value of 400, its z-score address would be plus one. A positive z-score means you are above the mean, a negative z-score means you are below the mean. So 400 has a z-score address, if you will, of plus one. What would it be for 500? If you're thinking that it's plus two, exactly. Because 500 is two standard deviations above the mean. Our mean is 300 and the standard deviation is 100. So 300 plus 100 gets us to 400. 400 plus 100 gets us to 500. 500 is two standard deviations above the mean. What about going below the mean? Well, 200 is one standard deviation below the mean. So the z-score address, if you will, for 200 is negative one. It's one standard deviation below the mean. And for the value here of 100, that one is two standard deviations below the mean, or a z-score of negative two, right? We go 300 minus 100, that's one standard deviation below. Then minus another 100, that's two standard deviations below. So we have a z-score as follows, right? Z-score of zero for the mean, negative one for 200, negative two for 100, plus one for 400, plus two for 500. And again, this is how many standard deviations it is away from the mean. Okay, well that comes back to our initial question. What's the z-score for 225? Well, you can see that 225 is gonna be somewhere between zero and negative one. It's closer to negative one. And we did the math and we got that it's negative 0.75. So 225 is negative 0.75 in terms of its z-score. It's three-fourths of a standard deviation below the mean. All right, so we have it up here. For this line, for 225, the z-score is negative 0.75. We've done step one. We drew the picture. We've done step two. We've calculated the z-score. Pretty easy, huh? Step three, refer to the appropriate z-table. Now, here is one of the beauties of having drawn this. You're wondering, which z-score should I go to? Well, let me ask you, what does this look like? Does this look like area between the mean and z, or does this look like area beyond z? And if you're like, yeah, it looks like area beyond z because you're, you're shading here and you're going off into the tail, excellent. That's why drawing the picture makes it so much easier. Now that we know which z table we're gonna go to, area beyond z, and we know what the z score is that we're gonna work with, negative 0.75, let's keep going. Here's our z table for our class. Again, we're looking at the area beyond z. To use this particular table, we're looking up again at negative 0.75. We're gonna ignore the fact that it's negative because, well, the distribution is symmetrical. What's true for a positive z-score is true for a negative z-score. So just know you don't have to worry about the negative. We're gonna just work with the 0.75 with our z-table. So z-score of 0.75, we're gonna go down here on the left column till we see 0.7, okay? But we also need that 0.05, so it's 0.75. So where we get that 0.05? So here's our row, 0.7. And then in terms of which column, we're looking for ending in 0.05. Here we go, 0.05. So 0.7 plus 0.05 gets us 0.75. And the corresponding area under the curve is 0.227. All right, so we update our drawing. Here it is, 0.227. That's the area under the curve for solving our percentile ranking problem, which is the area below the given value. It's 0.227. We are so close. On to step four, solve the problem. Add if needed. Don't need to add anything to it. This is the area we're interested in and we've got it. So multiply the proportion by 100 to get a percentage. So we take our 0.227, we multiply it by 100 and we get 22.7. And of course the easy way to do is to just move that decimal over two spots to get the 22.7. So our answer to our question is 22.7. That's the percentile ranking. So for a normal distribution, which we've got, with a mean of 300 and a standard deviation of 100, what is a percentile ranking, that is area below, for a value of 225? And we found out it is 22.7 percentile ranking. All right, so that's the first type of problem I might give you for a percentile ranking, right? You're finding area below the value and the value itself is below the mean. So you're just looking up area beyond Z and you run with it. Okay, for the second percentile ranking problem, we're gonna choose a value that's above the mean. So we're gonna go with 450. So we have for a normal distribution with the mean of 300, 
and a standard deviation of 100, what is a percentile ranking for a value of 450? And remember, percentile ranking automatically implies the area below that given value, always. So we're going to shade in everything below 450. Now you know, just by looking at our picture, that our percentile ranking is going to be bigger than 50th percentile. It has to be, because 50th percentile would be the mean, and that would be everything below the mean. This is bigger, it's 450. So you're going to have to add to solve this problem. I mean, there's sneaky ways to do it, but, but the easiest way is we're just going to add. We're going to add the 0 0.500 for this area between, uh, that's just simply below the mean. And then we got to figure out what is this area between the mean and Z, right? And we're looking at our two different Z tables, which one you think we're going to go to. Yeah, the Z table is called the area between the mean and Z. We're just going to add, we're going to find out what that area is between the mean and Z. We're going to add to 0 0.500. We're done. And then we can move on with our life. Okay, step one, draw the picture. Remember, this is the brains behind how to solve these problems because you just look at the picture like, oh yeah, this is clearly an area between the mean and Z type problem. Step two, calculate the Z-score. Easy math here, right? Value minus the mean quantity divided by standard deviation. When we do that, we get a Z-score of 1.50. What does that mean? It means that on a day when our photographer takes 450 pictures, that day, is one and a half standard deviations above the mean. Just a quick refresher. If she takes 100 photos, that would be a day where she's two standard deviations below the mean. If she takes 200 pictures, that would be a day when she's one standard deviation below the mean. If she takes 300 photos, that is the mean. Z-score is zero. If she takes 400 photos, one standard deviation above the mean. If she takes 500 photos, two standard deviations above the mean. 450 is right in the middle of 400 and 500, right? So she has one and a half standard deviations above the mean. The z-score, the number of standard deviations of value is away from the mean. And it's a positive z-score, which means that she is taking more photos than average. 450, 1.5 as our z-score. Okay, so I recorded up here, z-score is plus 1.50. The z-score uh, table goes to 100th place, so I'm just rounding this up here or taking it to the 100th place. Which Z table are we going to use? We've drawn the picture. It's going to be the area between the mean and Z. Let's do it. All right, we're at the right Z table, area between the mean and Z. We're going to go ahead and look up the Z of 1.5, and then the 100th place is a zero. So it's not uh, 1.51 or 1.52. It's 1.50. So zero column, 1.5 row. And the proportion is 0.5. 433. Okay, so here's our updated drawing. We know that 0 0.500 0, or half the distribution is below the mean. And we just found out the area between the mean and Z, between 300 and 450, right? Between a z-score of 0 and a z-score of 1.50. That area between the mean and Z is 0.433. Part 4. Solve the problem. Add if needed. Well, here we're going to need to add. When we add those two values, the 0.433 for the area between the mean and Z, to 0 0.500, the area below the mean, right? That's the entire shaded area that we're talking about. When we add those two together, we get 0.933. That's a proportion, 0.933. 100 times 0.933 is 93.3. And again, remember that trick. You can just move the decimal point over two spots to get the 93.3. So our percentile ranking, what is that going to be? Here is our problem. For a normal distribution with a mean of 300, a standard deviation of 100, what is a percentile ranking? That's the area below, and then turn into a percentage, for a value of 450. And we did the math. We added the 0 0.500 plus the 0 0.433. That was 0.933. We multiplied it by 100. We got 93.3. So the percentile ranking is 93.3 percentile. All right, I think we've covered a good amount of information within the time available. So I'm gonna stop here, I think it's a good stopping point and another video can be added if that's beneficial.